People typically procrastinate for one of four reasons, and it's important to identify which one of those four is causing you to put things off and never get anything done, so you can come up with a personalized anti-procrastination plan to attack it from the right angle. In fact, the reason that most productivity hacks and advice on how to overcome procrastination don't work for most people is that everybody procrastinates for different reasons and in different ways. This is why the promise of a one-size-fits-all strategy to finally overcome procrastination once and for all just never seems to work out. But the most important thing to understand of all here is that procrastination has nothing to do with being lazy or a lack of self-control. So trying to force yourself to stop putting things off and finally get to work using willpower or determination or mental toughness techniques just isn't going to work. You need something specific to the situation that you're in right now. But you probably already know this, and I'm willing to bet you've probably already tried most of the stop procrastinating tips out there already. Things like writing to-do lists and reviewing your goals goals, and the Pomodoro technique, where you work for 25 minutes, then take a five minute break, the GTD, or getting things done method, bullet journaling, and like a hundred other tricks out there. So if you want to stop putting things off and finally start getting things done, not just right now, but by actually building habits that last, then you need to know why you procrastinate and what to do about it right now. And the first reason we can label as stress. Under the heading of stress, we can basically include any activities that feel overwhelming or anxiety producing. So basically, life in general, stress peaks though when you feel like you just have way too much to do or you don't even know where to get started. Kind of like you're staring up at a giant mountain that you need to climb, but you don't even know how to take the first step because it's just so massively, staggeringly, overwhelmingly terrifying. Again, basically, life in general. Well, it's at this point that the part of your brain responsible for your emotions known as the amygdala steps in and, sensing a threat to your safety, takes over in a process called an amygdala hijack. Don't worry, dog. I got you. I'm gonna shut this thing down before things get crazy. And when that happens, your ability to use reason or logic or willpower to essentially force yourself to act basically goes out the window. Or as Dr. Pitchell, professor of psychology says here, procrastination is an emotion regulation problem, not a time management problem. An emotional regulation problem that unfortunately studies have shown lead to higher levels of stress and a larger number of health problems. Also lower levels of life satisfaction, more symptoms of depression and anxiety, and something that makes you more likely to experience experience headaches and insomnia and digestive issues, and that makes you more susceptible to flus and colds. Yay, procrastination. So clearly we need to get this taken care of, but I'm getting ahead of myself. And the next major reason that you may be procrastinating has to do with boredom. Boredom today has become one of the most uncomfortable feelings in the world. We're just not used to it anymore and we don't like it, which is why we're quick to abandon any task that feels tedious, repetitive, or uninteresting in favor of reaching for a quick hit of dopamine by scrolling social media, playing video games, or eating something delicious. The problem with this approach though is that most of the things that you want, the good stuff, the success, the rewards, the money, the health, the happiness, all that, well, almost all of it requires the ability to engage in tasks that are tedious and repetitive and sometimes even boring. The solution here then has to do with rewiring your brain to not just tolerate but actually embrace and look forward to doing hard and sometimes boring work. Now, I'll be honest with you, this next step is probably the least fun, but it's also probably the most effective of them all. I call it this or nothing, and it works 99 times out of 100, so I'll walk you through exactly how to do that in just a minute. But next, we need to go over the third most common cause of procrastination, which is self-doubt. Self-doubt-based procrastination usually comes up when you're faced with a task that you've never done before, or there's a lot at stake and you're afraid of messing it up and just looking bad. Now, I've got more in-depth strategies that we're going to be diving into in just a minute, but for now, here are four things that you may want to try out the next time you're faced with this kind of procrastination. The first of which is to embrace and really adopt a strategy that I absolutely love that goes, every master was once a disaster. I first heard this from T. Harv Ecker, and it's an important reminder that we all start from zero and we can't get anywhere if we don't even take that first step. And it's illogical and maybe even a little bit arrogant to think that we're going to be amazing the first time we do anything. Next is repeating a stoic expression that I first learned from Ryan Holiday that is memento mori, which essentially translates to you could leave life right now, which is a powerful reminder that life is short, or as Andy Dufresne would say, get busy living. 
Then there's the Aristotle quote that goes, the only way to avoid criticism, do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. And lastly, you could try keeping something that I call a confidence log, which is where you keep a written record of all of your past wins, both large and small. You see, confidence comes from evidence. So looking back at previous things that you've accomplished, challenges you've faced and overcome, or even just times when you've done hard things, well, looking back at all of these can help to boost your self-confidence and ability to take action again. I'll break this down more in just a minute when we talk about micro wins, but next we've got to talk about the fourth reason that you may be procrastinating, which has to do with actual physical or medical reasons. Physical conditions like fatigue and hunger, along with medical conditions like ADHD and anxiety and depression can all play a role in making it hard to get started, especially when a task is challenging, unclear, or boring. Now, I'm no doctor, but I am personally familiar with all of those conditions, including fatigue and hunger and ADHD and anxiety and depression, and how they can wreak havoc on your ability to get started and get things done if gone unchecked. So if that's you, please do not be afraid to talk to a competent and certified medical professional when it comes to things like anxiety and depression. And by competent and certified medical professional, I mean someone that went to medical school and not your neighbor's dog walker's cousin who happens to be offering free mental health consultations out of the back of a van behind your local supermarket. Now, when it comes to milder physical conditions like fatigue and hunger, the solution really could be as simple as making sure that you're getting enough rest and eating well. Not joking. As simple as it sounds, the solution really could be just sleeping more and eating healthy food. Okay, so now that we've got those laid out, you probably resonate and relate more to one or two than others. That's good. You can start there. You may also start to see that different causes and different symptoms are gonna pop up at different times and in different places. This is why it's good to have a toolkit ready, full of resources that you're able to deploy the next time you feel that procrastination bug start to creep in. Get out of here. So let me share with you some of the best tips and research out there and things that have personally worked for me in order to overcome procrastination, starting with prioritization. Many times people confuse procrastination with what's really just failing to prioritize things that are actually important to you. In other words, if you say that you wanna start reading more and make a habit of daily reading, and yet your calendar is just packed with back-to-back -back meetings and other commitments, well, you're not procrastinating, you simply do not have the time. And this is why step one to essentially doing anything is getting really clear on what's actually important to you and things that you actually need to get done, and then taking time to physically or digitally input that into your calendar. For example, if you wanna read, say, 15 minutes a day, well, it's important to find a 15 minute time spot on your calendar and then block it off. Wanna go for a run after work? Well, put that on your calendar too and don't let other responsibilities creep in or interrupt it. Get out of here. Have something that you need to do each and every single month, like say, review your bookkeeping or accounting and make sure that you file your taxes so you don't end up in prison for tax evasion? Then make sure you've got it scheduled. Otherwise, it's just too easy to brush off and ignore and procrastinate on. As important as this step is though, it's not going to get you to actually do it when the time comes. That's why you need something even more powerful to help you overcome procrastination in the moment, right when it strikes. This is why I recommend you adopt a habit that I learned long ago, and something I call this or nothing. Now, full disclosure, like I mentioned earlier, this ain't a lot of fun, and it's probably something you're not really gonna enjoy at first. But it works 99 times out of 100, and it's the closest thing that I've found to a magic bullet when it comes to beating procrastination and actually getting things done. So. Here's how it works. The problem with procrastination is that the thing you need to do is uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. This is why the solution and the hack that I've found in order to get myself to do something uncomfortable is to make the alternative even more uncomfortable. Let me explain. When I have something that I know I need to do and I've made it a priority by blocking it out on my calendar, when the time comes to actually do it, I give myself two choices, this or nothing. In other words, if I've set aside time to read, I'm allowed to read or do nothing. If I'm supposed to be writing, well, I can write or I can sit there and stare at the wall and do nothing. If I said I was going to work out, well, I can go work out or I can sit there and do nothing. That's it, it's really that simple. For the time that I've set that I'm going to do this thing, I'm able to do that thing or nothing at all. And this works because doing nothing sucks. It's boring, uncomfortable, 
painful even. And so inevitably, I'm gonna end up doing the thing that I need to do. Maybe slowly at first, maybe with a bit of resistance, maybe fighting it every step of the way. But sooner than later, typically within about five minutes, I find myself doing the thing because again, the alternative of just doing nothing is just so much worse. And then when I complete the task in what may be one of the most subtle and yet counterintuitively most important steps of all, I write down what I've just done. Essentially, patting myself on the back, which leads me perfectly to this next strategy, micro wins. One of the most important things to beating procrastination has to do with identity and who you see yourself as. In other words, do you see yourself as a procrastinator or as a confident person that takes action and gets stuff done? Wait, don't answer that yet, because I know that if you've been in any kind of a rut recently and you're having trouble crushing your goals and completing your tasks, then simply telling yourself a story that you're a powerful and capable action taker may not feel true yet. This is why you need to engineer it and build it and make it true one small step at a time. Now, to do this, some people like using affirmations, some like journaling, others like goal setting. But for me, the secret to this is micro wins. Setting small, almost embarrassingly small goals, and then physically writing them down and recording them after you've completed them. Like I said earlier, confidence comes from evidence. So what you're doing here is building evidence that you're a person that gets things done. Let's use the reading example again here. And let's say that you've decided that you want to start reading more, maybe 15 minutes a day. Well, don't start there. Start smaller, like way smaller, crazy, embarrassingly small. Like on day one, maybe all you need to do is buy a book or borrow a book or simply pick up a book that you already have. Then on day two, just read the inside cover. Day three, read page one. Day four, read pages two and maybe three. And slowly but surely build up from there. Every day, setting a very small goal, writing it down, achieving it, and reviewing it after. What's really important to note here is that what you're doing is far more important than just reading a simple page or two. What you're doing here is reprogramming your mind and your identity as someone who sets goals and takes action and achieves things. You say what you're gonna do, then you do it. And when that happens, your identity starts to change in the best way possible. Then once you've got that done, the next step is to start integrating even more productivity tips, tricks, hacks, and strategies. So to help you do that, I've linked up a video right here with seven steps to help you become a productivity master. So make sure to check that out now and I'll see you in that next video.